I'm going to read another excerpt from Jordan Ellenberg's book, How Not to Be Wrong. I like this story because it takes something that doesn't seem very mathematical on the surface, but it demonstrates how mathematical thinking worked behind the scenes to fix a problem. The hero of this story is Abraham Wald, a Jewish mathematician who helped the U.S. during World War II. This is the story of Abraham Wald and the missing bullet holes. Abraham Wald was born in 1902 in what was then the city of Klausenburg in what was then the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He was the grandson of a rabbi and the son of a kosher baker, but the younger Wald was a mathematician almost from the start. His talent for the subject was quickly recognized and he was admitted to study mathematics at the University of Vienna, where he was drawn to the subject's abstract and recondite even by the standards of pure mathematics, set theory, and metric spaces. But when Wald's studies were completed, it was the mid-1930s. Austria was deep in economic distress, and there was no possibility that a foreigner could be hired as a professor in Vienna. Wald was rescued by a job offer from Oscar Morgenstern. Morgenstern would later immigrate to the United States and help invent game theory. But in 1933, he was the director of the Austrian Institute of Economic Research, and he hired Wald at a small salary to do mathematical odd jobs. That turned out to be a good move for Wald. His experience in economics got him a fellowship offer at the Cowles Commission, an economic institute then located in Colorado Springs. Despite the ever worsening political situation, Wald was reluctant to take a step that would lead him away from pure mathematics for good. But then the Nazis conquered Austria, making Wald's decision substantially easier. After just a few months in Colorado, he was offered a professorship of statistics at Columbia University. He packed up once again and moved to New York, and that is where he fought the war. The Statistical Research Group, or the SRG, where Wald spent much of World War II, was a classified program that yoked the assembled might of American statisticians to the war effort. Something like the Manhattan Project, except the weapons being developed were equations, not explosives. Wald was, in some ways, an unlikely participant. His inclination, as it always had been, was toward abstraction and away from direct applications. But his motivation to use his talents against the axis was obvious, and when you needed to turn a vague idea into solid mathematics, Wald was the person you wanted at your side. So here's the question. You don't want your planes to get shot down by enemy fighters, so you armor them. But armor makes the plane heavier, and heavier planes are less maneuverable and use more fuel. Armoring the planes too much is a problem. Armoring the planes too little is a problem. Somewhere, there's an optimum. The reason you have a team of mathematicians socked away in an apartment in New York City is to figure out what that optimum is. The military came to the SRG with some data they thought might be useful. When American planes came back from engagements over Europe, they were covered in bullet holes, but the damage wasn't uniformly distributed across the aircraft. There were more bullet holes in the fuselage, and not so many in the engines. So, the data that they presented is as follows. This is the section of the plane versus the bullet holes per square foot. So the engine had 1.11 bullet holes per square foot. The fuselage had 1.73, the fuel system 1.55, and the rest of the plane had 1.8 bullets per square foot. The officers saw an opportunity for efficiency. You can get the same protection with less armor if you concentrate the armor on the places with the greatest need, where the planes are getting hit the most. But exactly how much armor belonged on those parts of the plane? That was the answer they came to Wald for. It wasn't the answer they got. The armor, said Wald, doesn't go where the bullet holes are. It goes where the bullet holes are not, on the engine. Wald's insight was simply to ask, where are the missing holes? 
the ones that would have been all over the engine casing if the damage had been spread equally all over the plane. Walt was pretty sure he knew. The missing bullet holes were on the missing planes. The reason planes were coming back with fewer hits to the engine is that planes that got hit in the engine weren't coming back. Whereas the large number of planes returning to base with thoroughly Swiss cheese fuselage is pretty strong evidence that hits to the fuselage can and therefore should be tolerated. Here's an old mathematician's trick that makes the picture perfectly clear. Set some variables to zero. In this case, the variable to tweak is the probability that a plane that takes a hit to the engine manages to stay in the air. Setting that probability to zero means a single shot to the engine is guaranteed to bring the plane down. What would the data look like then? You'd have planes coming back with bullet holes all over the wings, the fuselage, the nose, but none on the engine. The military analyst has two options for explaining this. Either the German bullets just happen to hit every part of the plane except the engine, or the engine is a point of total vulnerability. Both stories explain the data, but the latter makes a lot more sense. So the armor goes where the bullet holes are not. I can't tell you exactly how many American planes they saved, though the data-slinging descendants of the SRG inside today's military no doubt have a pretty good idea. One thing the American defense establishment has traditionally understood very well is that the countries don't win wars just by being braver than the other side or freer or slightly preferred by God. The winners are usually the guys who get 5% fewer of the planes shot down, or 5% less fuel, or get 5% more nutrition into their infantry at 95% of the cost. That's not the stuff war movies are made of, but it's the stuff wars are made of. There's math every step of the way. So why did Wald see what the officers, who had vastly more knowledge and understanding of aerial combat, couldn't? It comes back to his math-trained habits of thought. A mathematician is always asking, what assumptions are you making? Are they justified? This can be annoying, but it can also be very productive. In this case, the officers were making an assumption unwittingly, that the planes that came back were a random sample of all of the planes. If that were true, you could draw conclusions about the distribution of bullet holes on all the planes by examining the distribution of bullet holes on only the surviving planes. Once you recognize that you've been making that hypothesis, it takes only a moment to realize it's dead wrong. There's no reason at all to expect that the planes all have an equal likelihood of survival, no matter where they get hit. Walt's personality made it hard for him to focus his attention on applied problems. It's true. The details of planes and guns were, to his eye, so much upholstery. But he peered right through to the mathematical struts and nails holding the story together. Sometimes that approach can lead you to ignore features of the problem that really matter. But it also lets you see the common skeleton shared by problems that look very different on the surface. Thus, you have meaningful experience even in areas where you appear to have none. To a mathematician, the structure underlying the bullet hole problem is a phenomenon called survivorship bias. It arises again and again in all kinds of contexts. And once you're familiar with it, as Wald was, you're primed to notice it wherever it's hiding. That's all I'm learning. Hope that we can make a turn.